Cannabis suppresses male steroidogenesis and sexual potential at several levels, both central and peripheral. And in this video, I'll tell you how. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel, like this video if you haven't already, and leave a comment if you can for the algorithm. As some of you may have heard, people can develop gynecomastia and become hypogonadal, which means their testicles shrink, from just using marijuana. Yet cannabis isn't commonly known to be suppressive to men's testosterone synthesis. I found this surprising, and I thought to look into academic research to find out whether cannabis did indeed directly inhibit steroidogenesis at some level, either at the hypothalamus, the pituitary, or the gonads. Now it seems cannabis's main inhibitory effect actually occurs at the hypothalamus, at the beginning of steroidogenesis. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone neurons in the hypothalamus contain receptors for cannabinoid, the cannabinoid 1 receptor, CB1, and the cannabinoid uh, 2 receptor, CB2. They also locally in the brain, in the hypothalamus, synthesize at least two endocannabinoids. That means our body's natural molecules that agonize those two receptors, including anandamide and two arachidonyl monoacylglycerol. Cannabinoid signaling at those two receptors in the hypothalamus inhibits gonadotropin releasing hormone. Remember, that's the hormone that signals to the pituitary for you to produce luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. And in response to those two hormones, your testicles, if you're a man, will produce testosterone. It appears that cannabinoid uh, receptor 1 agonism at these cells in the hypothalamus inhibits spontaneous GABA release which inhibits some activity of postsynaptic GABA receptors that are on the gonadotropin-releasing hormone cells in the hypothalamus. And that's actually how their activity is inhibited molecularly. But there are also cannabinoid 1 receptors in the pituitary around, lut around cells that produce luteinizing hormone, for example. It's unclear whether the activity at the pituitary is a major part of the inhibitory effect of cannabis on steroidogenesis. It seems more, the major impact is at the hypothalamus higher up. Nonetheless, and as a whole, endocannabinoids and cannabinoid uh, and exogenous cannabinoids reduce luteinizing hormone synthesis in the body. However, follicle stimulating hormone synthesis has been a little bit less uh, easy to determine. Uh, I think the major studies on humans haven't been powered well enough to find a reduction in follicle stimulating hormone synthesis. Similarly, regarding testosterone, rodent studies show a dose-dependent effect of cannabis on testosterone synthesis, while human studies were unable to show this effect until quite recently. A recent study with over 1,500 American males found that they couldn't find a difference in testosterone levels between ever smokers or never smokers of cannabis, but they could find an association between the recency of the last time someone smoked cannabis and their testosterone levels. Fascinatingly, there are studies on mice rats, and even dogs showing necrosis of the testicles following cannabis exposure for up to 30 days. Necrosis means tissue death following uh, tissue degeneration in the testicles. Now it's thought that this tissue de degeneration around the testicles following cannabis exposure occurs due to reactive oxygen species produced at the testes and due to a relative lack of antioxidant enzymes there. Sperm cells produce reactive oxygen species when uh, defects exist in their spermatogenesis and immature sperm cells produce more ROS than mature, well-developed sperm cells. Fascinatingly, antioxidants can neutralize this effect at the testes, but it depends on their formulation. So there's a study showing that vitamin C and melatonin independently worsened the oxidative stress from cannabis to the testicles. But when combined together, they inhibited some of it. So it's really uh, <laughs> unpredictable. Finally, cannabis even affects erectile quality. So for example, cannabinoid 1 receptor antagonism can produce erections in rodents. It appears that cannabinoid 1 receptor agonism, so the activity of cannabis, would do the opposite effect, reduce erectile quality, by its effect on nitric oxide synthate. In summary, cannabis inhibits steroidogenesis from the highest point at the hypothalamus to the pituitary to the testicles, leaving a resultant decrease in luteinizing hormone and testosterone th synthesis. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I hope to see you again soon.